Now, this was one of the opening and certainly most dramatic salvos in the Houthis' recent attacks on international shipping. They released this footage, showing their fighters landing on the deck of the Galaxy Leader, a Japanese-operated cargo ship in the Red Sea. Now, the Houthis have been involved in Yemen's long and bloody civil war and are backed by Iran. Because Iran needed a lot of proxies, including Hamas, including Hezbollah, including other uh, proxy militias in the, uh, uh, across the Arab region, they reached out to the Houthis, they empowered them through the previous wars, and now, of course, they're backing them with military expertise, with some weaponry, and also with political cover in the region. Now, as well as capturing the galaxy leader, the Houthis have launched more than 100 attacks on other ships passing through the Bab al-Mandab Straits and into the Red Sea. As well as risking the lives of ordinary sailors, it's disrupting one of the world's most important trade routes. Now, the Houthis say they're targeting Israeli interests, but it's led to a huge amount of shipping avoiding the region, taking the longer route around Africa. And that will have consequences for the global economy. So the increases in costs that will follow from having to reroute these vessels around the Cape of Good Hope will be felt uh, by consumers in the fullness of time. That said, it is not all commodities that are diverting. There is still a significant amount of trade transiting through the Red Sea, and we would expect uh, confidence in that region to increase uh, as Operation Prosperity Guardian endures. Now, Operation Prosperity Guardian that he mentioned there is the name of the US-led international response. A couple of days ago, that saw an American helicopter destroy three Houthi boats, which were said to be attacking a cargo ship. Over the weekend, the Defence Secretary Grant Shapps threatened direct action against the group. Now, that would be a vast escalation. But also, given the Houthis have survived years of Saudi airstrikes, would it even work? Uh, the Houthis are not a high-tech military. They're not uh, a military that has a lot of very sophisticated facilities that you can that you can hit. Uh, uh, certainly, you could target uh, those facilities that are being used uh, for the uh, launch of these drones or rockets, uh, but uh, but that's limited and probably relatively easily replaced. Uh, and so that's part of the problem that the U.S. is facing right now. Now, the danger here is of escalation. The U.S. and the U.K. seem keen to avoid Israel's war in Gaza, expanding into a far more dangerous and unpredictable regional conflict. And Yemen is one of the places that escalation could happen. Now, some say that would even play into Iran's hands. They're looking for a direct confrontation, especially for the Iranians. This is a very low-cost way of uh, basically fighting the West through their proxies, and they can drag this for years and years and years. So that is not exactly ideal to give them that opportunity. This is basically an entrapment by the, by the Iranians and by the Houthis. Do not fall into that trap. Now, in the last few hours, the US and its allies have released a further warning to the Houthis, saying that they will bear the consequences if the attacks continue. The question is, do they take that as a threat or an opportunity?